Welcome to another exciting and informative edition of Market Made Atlanta. Stone Peyton, Corey Rick here with you this afternoon. Corey, this is going to be so much fun. I have so been looking forward to this series. We're going to get a chance to continue to support and celebrate folks out there working so hard every day, just doing good work, serving the market, serving the profession, serving their community. We're going to do things a little differently in this series. We're also going to dive into that relationship, the the, the structure, the discipline, the rigor that practitioners out in the marketplace apply when they go arm in arm to go serve their mutual client bases. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to to hear those stories and maybe capture some thought leadership about how to go to market together and help more people make more money and, uh, I don't know, have more fun. What do you think? Hey, sounds great to me and do more good. I love it. All right. So who'd you invite to join us today? Well, today we have the distinct pleasure of having uh, the two head honchos at Scarlet Oaks Financial, uh, Faye Sykes, who is the CEO of Scarlet Oaks Financial, and Kevin Salvadori, who is one of their wealth managers there. Faye, Kevin, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. They have great, great subject matter expertise in financial planning. Uh, I met Faye uh, about a year and a half ago. She was a uh, guest on my Tuesdays with Corey show, and she is a national expert on social security planning. And that that really is a business. And I found, uh, after getting to know Faye and interviewing her, uh, I, I found that that's a really important thing that many times people overlook. W- would you Would you agree with that, Faye? Absolutely. It was interesting when I first started in the industry 15 years ago, my former employers said, oh, it's not important. Don't plan on it. But for the average American, it's 40 to 60 percent of the retirement income. Wow. I think that what you've done with that is extremely impressive. And knowing you, uh, I know that the people that I bring to you are going to be taken care of, that they're going to be held in high regard, and that you're going to talk to them like you would talk to your own parents if you uh, were working with them. So that I feel very, very grateful for. And, you know, for for me, I, I have a focus on long-term care since 2001, and, and we get asked a lot of questions about life insurance and about disability and about how all the pieces with financial planning fit together. And I think you and, and Kevin really do a good job of putting that all together for clients. And, you know, for so many years, I've searched for a market mate to help with that, to really look out for clients and do the right thing. And I'm, I'm, I feel very, very good that I found your organization. So that I, I very much appreciate. And we appreciate you, Corey. Thank you. And Kevin has a lot of financial planning experience and wealth planning experience. And I think that uh, uh, those of you out there in the listenership may recognize Kevin as the guy that convinced Chris Weber <laughs> to call the timeout in the 1993 NCAA championship basketball game. Kevin, welcome. <laughs> well, thank you. But it's funny because the longer time goes by, the fewer people know that because I mean, that was 25 years ago. But um, uh, thank, thank you for that, for reminding me how that we've all gotten older. <laughs> it, it's it's kind of scary because now I remember when I was at Carolina and guys would come back that played 20, 25 years before I did. And they'd introduce themselves. And I was like, oh, very nice to meet you. And they'd walk away and be like, I have no idea who that guy was. I'm that guy now. <laughs> <laughs> so You know what? It's OK, though, because, you know, I'm still walking around. So that's a good thing. Well, I think that you're, you bring, um, a, a certain, uh, I know that you understand discipline. We've talked about this mm-hmm. and that there's blocking and tackling that has to happen every day. And that's one mm-hmm. of the things that, uh, I certainly appreciate uh, about Faye having the Midwestern Wisconsin, uh, work ethic and also about you having been a college athlete. You understand that there's things every day you have to do to be mm-hmm. successful. Absolutely. And, it, and it, a lot of it comes from discipline. And I, I played for one of the best coaches of all time with Coach Dean Smith and, you you know what he taught all the time is what you do today with your, your practice pays off for the, the the game and it's the same thing with this with with what we're doing what I do today meeting as many people as I can get in front of good quality people it's how we got together uh, uh, as ourselves um, it just leads to good things leading to leads down the road leading to being able to really help people and that's one of the main reasons why I got into this business because I played professionally for quite some time saw some people really throw a lot of their money away and put themselves in bad situations and being able to do what we do, learning from Faye, uh, we've actually been able to really help some people out and really prepare them to, to have lives that they really want to live. 
Well, I think that Scarlet Oaks Financial has done a very, very effective job of putting their information out in the marketplace. Uh, your information is always educational. You do a lot of workshops, right? Oh, absolutely. We, uh, and actually we're starting to work on our 2020 plan already. Uh, you know, getting our whole calendar together. And one of the things that, you know, before I kind of go into our own calendar, but last week we had a meeting with Corey and his assistant, Amber, mm -hmm. and we are looking at doing some co-branded events, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of this whole helping each other out. But we're going to mm -hmm. do some co-events and bring different clients and prospects and things like that just so we can make the introduction in a very low-key kind of situation. Um, yeah, yeah, you've done a very good job. Uh, you know, the people that have gone to your workshops always come back with great feedback. And, uh, I know that, um, you're very much taking a consultative, uh, educational approach 100%. and, uh, low key. And, uh, I think that you've done an excellent job of differentiating your firm with the two of you because, uh, you're able to bring things to people. Uh, in an educative, low-key way. Well, one of the things that I'll say, it's for a lot of my kind of other colleagues out in the industry, they have a tendency to bring in product vendors that will help sponsor and pay. We specifically don't ever have any sponsors. <clears throat> and Why is that a big deal? Because, they, you know, they don't want to pay for it. And so if I bring in a product, you know, if I bring in XYZ insurance company or asset management company, then they're going to want to do all the talking. And so for us, we don't bring in the sponsors. We don't get the money. We just pay for it out of our own pocket. But I've had so many people say, tell me that they actually learned something in our events. Oh, there's no question about that. Well, I think the other thing that uh, I really uh, is important to me at our firm, we're neutral. We help the client. We go to the market. Mm -hmm. We find the right solution for them based on their health and based on their wealth. And, and based on uh, the kind of plan they want and the sort of nuances they want in a plan. And that's, that's pretty much the same thing that you do, right? Yeah, we are <clears throat> fiduciaries. So in our industry, the way that we are licensed, we are held to the highest legal standard in our industry. We are legally obligated to give unbiased and the best, you know, advice that we can. Um, you know, people that work for some of the bigger firms are, you know, at the broker dealer level are held to a suitability level. And that means as long as it's suitable for the consumer, even if it makes them more money, the, the product costs more, they legally can still sell it and not get in, into legal issues. And there's a lot of people out there that say they're fiduciaries that are not fiduciaries. Yeah. Well, I think, <clears throat> you know, I, I throw compliments around like manhole covers and I've done my <laughs> research and uh, I know that the clients that come to me and uh, for years, I would hear, you know, well, Corey, you know, I need a life insurance policy. Can't you do it? You know, can't you do it? No, that's not what I do. Why not? Why can't you do it? And it's kind of like I, I, I don't know enough about it to do it in a way that's consistent with my brand. And, and so for many years, I've said, okay, my clients come to me for help. And they, they ask me, you know, my wife and I don't have any kids. And so our biggest discussions often end up about, you know, where we're going to go out to eat. And so people will call me for restaurants. They'll call me for random things. But, you know, when they call me for the life insurance and they press you uh, or financial planning, I'm able to say, hey, I don't do that. But I have, uh, you know, a market referral partner, a market mate that will help you. And I am I trust them. And I would expect that you would want to spend some time and learn their perspective. And so uh, that's been extremely helpful and frankly, a relief with as many clients as we've accumulated over the years that ask us for these things. So how do you handle that handoff? Do you introduce them electronically? Do you get them together for a lunch? Because I would think that that's an important aspect it, of all this. It, you're 100% right. Well, you know, on, on some level now, uh, I'm really dating myself here, but kind of kind of like you're, you're kind of like Chuck Woolery, you know, <laughs> on on. um I forget the the love connection. <laughs> Kevin's not old enough to uh, know what you're uh, talking I, I, about. I, I, no, 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 I watch that. Two and two. <laughs> I, two and two. I, I love two. <laughs> I love that show. And and so you've got to match the personalities. That's a that's something that isn't mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of times mm -hmm. isn't taken into account. And, and so one of the reasons that I really like Faye and Kevin is their their personalities mix very very well with drivers 
they mix very, very well with people that are sort of laid back and, and they're able to adjust and be able to respond accordingly. And you know what? I know at the end of the day, they're just going to help people. And that takes a lot of pressure off me. And because I've worked something so complex for clients, they already trust me. And so most of the time they're going to, at the very least, meet with them. But what I would do is I say, Hey, I, I will spend time with each of them. Uh, you know, my client, I'll say, Hey, well, here's Kevin and Faye. Here's what they do. Here's their subject matter expertise. Here's, and I'll introduce them that way. And I'll have the same conversation about the client with Kevin and Faye. And they meet the two of them will meet with the client together because I think the two of them think very similarly, but they are, they bring some other things to the table that the other may not consider. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I'll introduce them virtually via email and then I'm out of the middle of it. And so we set the expectations, then getting together is with them. And I think Faye and Kevin, although I don't want to speak for you, I, I think they like to meet with people personally to see how they can be of service. And, and typically what they find out is there's other things that they can help the client with. And, um, you know, they've been very, very helpful that way for, without question. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, just to kind of, uh, Corey does, you know, give us a call, go over mm -hmm. the case, does the introduction. And then, you know, we just follow up. And one of our protocols is, you know, once we start working with somebody in any capacity, we do weekly updates, mm -hmm. um, you know, really kind of hold their hand. I, I sort of joke that I become people's financial spouse. <clears throat> and, uh, <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm their financial coach. I don't do the spouse thing. I, I stick with the coach. <laughs> He's the coach. Th I'm the spouse. Thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> yes. It might get a little awkward. But, but when it gets down to it, people just want, they want to be informed, given the right information, mm -hmm. enough so that they can make the proper decision yeah. for them and their family. And that's what we really do is go through, because there's no perfect product, there's no perfect solution. But if we go through the pros and cons and give them, you know, help them understand why something may or may not be good, I find that people feel really happy about that. And yeah. then the referrals, you know, cause they tell other, everybody else. Well, and the other thing too, is there's, it's no, it's not a cookie cutter thing. Everybody's different. Yeah. So the, what we're going to go over with them, what we're going to educate them with, what we're going to uh, op offer them as options for them is that might be different from one person you send us to the next. Yeah. And that is, I think that that's how we really build that comfort level with them because we make it personal. We, we really get to know them and make sure that what we're going to do for them and how we're going to help them is going to really uh, be the best thing for them. Yeah. I, I think that the fact that you're very much conversational, I think, I think you've really in any business, I think you've really arrived when you can just have a conversation mm -hmm. with people and you're not using any sort of company or industry collateral and you can mm -hmm. just talk. I mean, you know, I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday, uh, and they were saying, well, you know, this other person brought their company collateral, and they were talking about this and pointing to this and pointing to that. And I said, let me ask you something. If you go to the dentist because you need a root canal, how would you feel if he or she pulled out, uh, you know, a PowerPoint presentation or a document that said, okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply the nerve block, and here's where we're going to apply it on the tooth, and here are the instruments we're going to use? You probably wouldn't like that. And, and she just kind of looked at me and said, yeah, I wouldn't like that. You just want the pain to go away. Yeah. And I think that people want things succinct. They want to be con consulted. Mm -hmm. I don't think people want to be sold. I mean, I don't want to be sold. No, nobody wants to be sold. <clears throat> well, and I think, you know, just to kind of sort of layer on what Corey's saying is that, you know, when somebody comes in, sometimes they're not really looking for us. They might be looking for a CPA. They might be mm -hmm. looking for an attorney. We do tons of introductions to <clears throat> other trusted <clears throat> yeah. folks out there. And I'm just like, Corey, I get calls from who's a good pest control to. I had a client last week who is doing a light retail commercial build out <laughs> and was like, the person we were originally looking at, they can't do it. <clears throat> and so I got her like three people instantaneously yeah. to at least talk to. So. Well, I think the, the advantage of having been in the business as long as the three of us have, I mean, you build these contacts, you build, you know, when your client comes to you, you got to have an answer. Mm -hmm. You got to find somebody. And that's the advantage of having, you know, been in this, you know, 15, 18, 20 years is you build up these contacts and people that you can send business to that will actually help the people that need mm -hmm. it. 
Mm-hmm. Well, you- <clears throat> and, but some of that too, though, I think is the discipline to continue to cultivate those contacts. Cause yeah, I got to right tell that. you, no, I, no, I, I failed in that as, as recently as this morning. I have a studio partner here in the metro Atlanta area who runs a studio. They just have a brand new client who is underwriting a show. And the way our, stu- our thing is structured, uh, either the studio partner or their client designs the, the graphics. We have some placeholder graphics, but they're the ones. And so this guy came to me this morning, or maybe it was late last night, asking for a go-to graphics person to design the album cover and the banner. And I, I have not invested the time and energy that I should have to this point. I mean, we've been doing this for over 12 years so that I could just really say, yeah, absolutely. You want to talk to Susie or John. And it's because I haven't invested the time to cultivate that. And that does take time and energy and all that, right? Well, you have, uh, I mean, you know, you have a, you have a pretty good database of people that you can call and. Even right. If- but now I got to go to, that's what I'm doing. When this show's over, I'm going back to the house. I'm going to work from the house for the rest of the day. And the very first thing at the top of my list, I got to go dig through the people I know in the graphics business and have a conversation with them and. See about getting them connected with this guy. You, you can do that after you buy us lunch. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Oh, we're getting lunch? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. I didn't That's... know lunch was included. That is fantastic. I'm... Well, now you know. Are you a steak and seafood guy like me? Oh, yeah. No, I, mean... I, I got high end taste, so I'm going I'm to cost you some money. So. <laughs> All right. Nice. <laughs> so, what, uh, how do you guys go about putting on your workshops? Tell us about that a little bit. Well, basically, we, by October of the prior year, mm. We get the whole schedule set out. Mm-hmm. How you know, do you do that? Uh, well, you know, we have, because I've been doing this for years, there are certain topics that just people really engage in. Uh, you know, earlier this year, we had fear around money. And we talk about, you know, what are the things that, you know, I look at it, there's the avoider, mm-hmm. the spender, the saver, and the martyr are kind of the the four things around fear. So we go through and, and literally people get really engaged in these kind of things. They're asking questions. There's dialogue, but we have our, our next one coming up, um, August 21st. Actually, we do have one this coming Saturday mm-hmm. that Kevin's hosting. It's what's just that, what's that called? Financial 101. Yep. But I affectionately call it my adult teen class. <laughs> <laughs> she likes to come up with some interesting names. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's she, is, she is good for that, mm-hmm. of course. Well, you got to make it fun. You know, I, I read once an article that the average person would rather clean their toilet than sit down with a financial planner. Um, uh, not me. <laughs> just for the except, record. Except for Corey. Uh, but we've got a um, August 21st, we've got a retirement 321 blast off. <laughs> and that is going to cover little five minutes on Medicare, Social Security, life insurance, long-term care, you know, life, uh, all these different things, budgeting, kind of all the things you need to think about for retirement. Uh, you know, on our website, uh, scarletoakfs.com has the full events, mm-hmm. and you can actually sign up. Um, but for my specialty, October 30th, we do have a lunch and learn that's going to be going over Social Security and <coughs> Medicare. But, you know, we basically kind of look at what are the topics. And when we have each of our events, we ask the attendees, like, hey, what are some other topics that might be of interest, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and get input from them. And then uh, we did a book club, a virtual book club earlier this year. We are looking at doing another one, uh, you know, on financial literacy. It, It actually really hurt my heart to see when the government shutdown happened for three weeks that the new statistic came out that 70% of Americans have less than $400 of emergency savings. Isn't that shocking? That's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. So anyway, for financial literacy, and just for a very quick background, I used to be a fashion designer. I went to Syracuse, was a fashion designer, knew nothing about money. My parents taught me nothing about money. And I had an epiphany. They can't teach you what they don't know. So I made this... you know, shift and change. I'm an artist in a financial world. And so the financial literacy was a huge part of why I came in this industry was not only to educate myself, but as many other people as possible. And you certainly, you've done a great job with that. I think that your personality, uh, certainly your knowledge, uh, the fact that you have uh, Kevin uh, involved to help with some mm-hmm. of the wealth mm-hmm. uh, and some of the things that uh, allow you to kind of be out there and do it. 
Uh, you've done as good a job as anybody I've seen in the industry bring about education to people that could be clients or prospective clients. So for, for that, uh, well done. Thank you. Well, you. You find that if people are educated, they can make better decisions for themselves. Well, I think the – don't you think, though, Kevin, that people – don't you think that this like, no trust thing, there is something to that? I mean, I personally can't do anything with anybody if I don't like them. I'm not wired that way. And if I don't like them, I don't have the interest in getting to know them. And if I don't know them, I'm certainly not going to trust them. And so that's a, those three things have really served me well mm -hmm. over the years. And I think that, uh, you know, you guys are certainly eminently likable. You have great, great knowledge. And, uh, you know, I think you guys have no problems fulfilling those three things. Without a doubt. I think that's why we hit it off the way we did when we, we first got together. Um, we're, we're like-minded in that way. And, and I get along with most people, but there's always somebody that you just aren't going to like. And there's going to be people that just aren't going to like us. And yeah. that's fine. That's the way the world goes. But uh, you want to work with people that you're going to enjoy meeting with because because when we're working with a client, it's not like we sit down with them once and we figure out what, how we're going to, what, what kind of products or what kind of process we're going to go through and then we're done with them. This is a lifelong thing. We're going to be reaching out to them. We're going to have a lot of interaction for many, many years. So you have to be able to enjoy spending time with them. You have to be able to communicate with them. And that is imperative for what we do. Well, I think because of the success that the two of you have enjoyed in the industry, <clears throat> it lends itself to being more laid back. It lends itself to being more consultative because mm -hmm. I think I've had this theory for a while that I think people can smell fear a mile away. And if you're sure. needing a sale, yeah. uh, this mm -hmm. might not be the right business. And I think that, uh, in my opinion, you guys go about this the right way. Well, we come from a background, too, where we work for another company that was just sell, 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 and close, close, close. And it was... I just didn't feel like we were helping people properly the way it was. And it's nice to be able to really consult people and, and really know that we're going to be able to help them. Well, I think you're able to bring the business to people in a manner that's consistent with your brand, right? Exactly. So what do you, Kevin, what do you like best about what you do? And for me, the best thing I like is I, I know I had a friend that come to me a couple of weeks ago and she asked me, how do I sleep at night? And I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, you have all these people's monies and you, you got, you're, you got these, the, such, such these important decisions for these people's lives. How do you go to sleep at night and not just worry and, and, and be, be upset? I know what we're doing. We're truly helping people. Yeah. And that has been something that's very important to me. Different jobs that I've had in the past, the, the, the jobs I've enjoyed the most is, is truly helping people, knowing that I'm helping people. And I have utmost faith. That we, we really get to know them. We really know what we're doing. We really do what's best for them yeah. and that we are setting them up to succeed for whatever it is I want. And I love that. I love that the, the response when you're, when you, when, when, when you're done with helping somebody, we're, we're never really done, but when we're, we really start that process and, and they see which direction we're going to go in and, and, and how happy they are and knowing that they are going to be able to relax and, and not have to worry about these things anymore and know that we've, improve their lives that is the by far the, the thing i like the most yeah and I, that comes through loud and clear what about you faye what do you like what gives you the most satisfaction in what you do on a day-to-day -day basis you know i will you know just the general helping people but there's nothing more exciting to tell somebody that they can retire and they don't have to worry mm. And, you know, would you tell my wife that, please? <laughs> <laughs> we will have a chat after soon. you buy lunch. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, you know, it, uh, I have one story that was interesting. This gentleman had worked like 27 years for the same company, only had one job. And he's like, I am so burned on working here. So we had a one year exit strategy plan. And two weeks later, he got a one year severance. And we're like, woohoo. Nice. And, you know, and he was, um, Interesting. He was a referral from a bank, a community bank, because they didn't have financial advisors and he was widowed. And so he had received a, a huge chunk of money and, um, you know, kind of went through and did long term care, did his assets under management, all of this kind of stuff. And, you know, that man, when he comes in twice a year, the look of peace on his face because he knows that he doesn't have to worry. It's, it's really huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you've been a part of making sure that he's, you know, got a plan, followed it, and you've made sure that he's in the best position to be golden to, uh, in fact, enjoy his golden years. Exactly. I don't worry about him at all. <clears throat>
So you guys have a workshop tomorrow. Can can the listenership participate in that, do you think? Yeah, we still have some open seats for that. We do, absolutely. So How would they go about? They can go online to our to our website, scarletoakfs.com, and go to the events page, and then they can sign up for it. It's a free, it's a free ticket. Free, free ticket. Or, the, you know, I would also say, just since it's last minute, they can also email Kevin. Yes. At uh, Ke- go ahead. I, I know my own email address. <laughs> Are you uh, sure? You, you can email me at Kevin at Scarlet scarletoakfs.com and if you want to come just let me know because we do have a couple of open seats still and your offices are located where 1708 Peachtree Street Northwest office number 201 30309 and the workshop tomorrow is financial 101 just going over the financial basics different ways to invest different accounts um the flow of money, uh, just just basics of investments, as, as Faye likes to call it, the adulting class. You're going to walk out of there. When you come in, you're going to learn a lot. There's no proprietary stuff. We're just it's strictly teaching. And when you walk out of there, you're going to know about ninety percent more than you're going to know more than about ninety percent of the people in the country. And it starts about eleven a.m. Right? It does. It starts at eleven a.m. It goes for an hour. Light snacks. You can always come in and have a light light snack, and then you get to listen to me. Um, and you get to see me tower over you as I, as we talk and interact. <laughs> well, that's great. I think, uh, uh, you've certainly done a great job of putting out the educational events for folks. And, uh, if people wanted to get up to speed on what other events you have, how would they figure that out, Faye? Well, we have, we do have a newsletter, um, which, uh, weekly newsletter where people, we can add folks onto there. Um, and you know, they can email at info at scarlet, S C A R L E T oak. OAKFS.com. We can add them onto that. Our website, you know, scarletoakfs.com has an event page where people can log in, you know, sign up. Also, we have a Facebook page where they can go on and see all the events and all of that. Um, but yeah, it's, we, we try to make it extremely easy Mm. in our newsletter that comes out. We have a lot of really great educational information. Again, we don't have any, there's nothing salesy about it. It's all good information for people to to know. And one of our recent things we just decided is to have a uh, definition of the week, you know, because a lot of times people don't understand basic terminology of our industry. Interesting. So what's this week's definition of the week? I believe <clears throat> it's going to be in-kind transfer, which in-kind transfer is where... That sounds you, technical. I know. It, it's a basic, but it's like in-kind transfer is... You can move your Coca-Cola stock from Charles Schwab to Scarlet Oak. We use TD Ameritrade, but we don't actually have to sell or buy the product. It just shifts over. Uh, you get control of it, right? Yeah. It's just, it's like moving, it's like moving furniture. I'm all about making stuff simple. Let's say you sold your condo and bought a townhouse. Doesn't mean you have to sell your furniture. You can just move that furniture from the one place to the other. So if you use that same analogy for investments, hmm. it's just shifting it from one place to another, but without actually selling and buying new stuff. So it's better for the client to do that, right? Yeah, in most cases, yeah, <clears throat> especially if it's a non-retirement account, because it can put tax consequences out there that they might not be aware of. Yeah. People hate su- tax surprises. Yes. <laughs> I'll just yes. say that. I thought everybody loved it's taxes. pretty universal. All right, let's talk about me some more. Yeah? <laughs> let's, let's, let's do that. All right. So I was sharing with I, you. I was hoping we'd get to that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I was sharing with you that Holly and I were talking, and she's retiring in 18 months and, and that kind of thing. But I was, I was, I was kind of saying it in jest, but she really does worry more about retirement. Are we going to have enough... And I really don't worry at all. And I think part of it is just the way we, we both, you know, we keep track of our net worth and all that stuff. But I mean, I just, I think we're just wired differently. So do you guys, you guys got to play like marriage counselors, therapists. <laughs> There's a lot to your job. Hold on. <laughs> do we have enough time for this? <laughs> I will say we, you know, when it comes around that fear and money, you know, you get couples like she's the spender, he's the saver, vice versa. There's a lot of the, uh, you know, I love the, oh, well, I buy all this extra stuff, but I hide it from my spouse. And it's like, no, this is not good. <laughs> but, um, you know, we use, uh, of course, software that can go through and take people's assets, insurance, you know, look at ways to maximize the Social Security. But it can give people a real-time look on what that would look like and project it out for many years. 
And so, and somebody besides me, like even if I knew how to do that and I don't, it's a lot better for Faye and her software or <laughs> Kevin to do that, right? And, exactly. wa- and walk it through for. So I wanted to ask about that. I also continuing to talk about me a little bit. I'm quite serious. I've got to get better. I think it's one of the reasons I'm doing this show. I think I've got to get better at this whole market mate idea, right? Cultivating relationships and, and, and building a, a structure for handing them off and that kind of, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> what insight can any of the three of you, and I'd like all of you to kind of chime in on this. Offer me on you know, finding, vetting, onboarding someone that you're willing to bring into your circle. Because, I mean, man, you're handing over your client. I, I, I will start off. I think, you know, first, for me, it's it, for me personally, it's like no trust. And um, uh, I drive my executive coaches, past coaches nuts because I don't do anything right away. And I think you have to vet somebody. You have to be comfortable. I think situationally in your head, you have to run through, all right, how is this person going to do with this kind of person? How is this person going to do with somebody that asks a million questions? How is this person going to do with somebody that doesn't have any patience? Or how is this person going to do with somebody that has no knowledge? Because a lot of times there are people out there that you send business to, but and unless somebody, unless the money's ready to jump into their pocket, they don't want to talk to the person. Mm. And so you have to put them in position to get to the right person. So for me... I'm, I try to get experience with the person first. Then my clients train me. My, I, my clients are trained to say, Corey, what is your history with this person? Have you done business with this person? And what's been the response? And so the like, no trust thing, I think is really important, but I think you've, everybody's got to go through their own vetting process because ultimately if I send somebody, if I refer somebody to someone, and their experience is unsatisfactory, that can adversely affect my relationship, which I don't want to do. Long, <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> long, long answer to a short question. No, that's the kind of detail that I'm asking for. Yeah. Okay. Well, for me, um, you know, when I started back in the industry in 2005, uh, I have been on nine nonprofit boards. I've been uh, the membership for the Decatur Business Association. I'm a former distinguished past president for Kiwanis and a lieutenant governor. I was about 25 years younger than everybody else. <laughs> um, my first like four or five years in the business, I gave out about five to 6,000 business cards. So when I say I got out in the community, I also volunteered a ton. You know, Decatur, I lived in Decatur at the time, Decatur Book Festival, Art Festival, Wine Festival, Beer Festival, you know, beach party, all these different things. Well, all of a sudden you've met the same people 15, 20, 25 times. You've seen them volunteer. You, they volunteered on a board or what have you. And that has solidified relationships long-term where I know if I'm, you know, in that case of the light retail build out, the guy, Ed, the builder who is on a networking group with me, which I was also was on PowerCore and BNI. I know that when I refer somebody to him, he will take care of that person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to be clear that whoever, after you're going through your vetting process or whatever and being comfortable and liking and knowing and trusting the person, but you have to, whoever you refer the business to has got to follow through. I mean, there's mm-hmm. nothing worse than telling mm-hmm. a client, hey, call X and X doesn't do anything yeah. because the client comes back to you and says, well, Kevin, why'd you send me to this guy? He, he, you know, your, your guy never mm-hmm. called me. <laughs> I mean, the big, big thing for me is, is the follow through. And when I get, when I get referrals, like when we get referrals, the biggest thing for me in my mind is I am now representing you. And that is huge because I want to make sure that, because I know you have built years and years to build your brand up. And I'm not going to be that person to tarnish it. I appreciate that. And, and, and I'm looking for the exact same thing. And you face it, you get out there, you meet people. Somebody messes with one of my clients one time and it only takes one time. Then I'm going to look somewhere else. Yeah. Because you are a reflection on me. You've already let up, let up on that. But, um, and I want to make sure that when I send somebody somewhere, I want them to get the best. And when somebody sends me somebody, they're going to get my best every time. Yeah. I, I think that that's paramount and, uh, uh, you know, certainly being low key and hey, how can I be of service today? That's usually the first words that come out of my mouth mm-hmm. when somebody gets mm-hmm. referred to me because, you know, you don't, you really have no idea how, uh, they got to you and, and they may need a CPA. They may need out of the box ways to promote their business, like business radio X. I mean, they're, 
I don't, you, you, they may come to you for a reason that's not related to your expertise. Absolutely. Well, and I will say, yeah, that, that building that relationship, that trust is paramount. And, you know, one of the other things that we do is a lot of social media, blog posts, yeah. the newsletters, and we have a full time, um, marketing person on staff. And we had asked for a little input for her for this, you know, uh, radio show. But she said, you know, for those of you that are trying to build, because people do look at your online presence. Yes. Absolutely. It's your online resume. But she, you know, her top three things was consistency. You know, if you start a weekly newsletter, then you got to keep doing a weekly newsletter. Um, have a content plan. She does a monthly theme. You know, so August right now is back to school. You know, and so all these things are going to be helpful for kids in that. And then scheduling a lot of stuff ahead of time. So she might schedule things out two, three months ahead of time. But again, like just like our event planning we schedule out for the whole year, our whole marketing content marketing is also scheduled out the entire year ahead by October, November of the prior year. Yeah, I know you're very, very detailed and you've you you've got an excellent game plan put out there to put the information out there, at least from where I sit. Mm -hmm. you, you've done a great job with that. Well, we, we try very hard, but it's... Well, you don't do that. You succeed. You, you've done more <laughs> than try. Trying is dying. Nobody cares about try, that. Trying and dying. Well, no, the last little thing I wanted to touch on was the... Um, so Corey and I, you know, obviously I had gone on his uh, radio show about a year and a half ago, and that was fantastic. And then he and I belonged to another little networking event called Corporate Connections, and it's interesting. So Corey and I and Kevin have a very strategic alliance, but because of some of these other things we're doing, um, have a divorce team. So there's myself and a few other people had gone through a divorce training class called Divorce This House back in 2012. So we meet with people that, uh, this, actually this week we met with a divorce attorney. Next Friday we're meeting with a divorce mediator. And so it's like a realtor, a home inspector, a mortgage, and the financial. And for Kevin, uh, we have a sports and entertainment group. Oh, you said it right. I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, where we've got CPAs, attorneys, you know, sports and entertainment, CPA, sports and entertainment attorneys, and the financial. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we're going to bring Corey in for any of the long-term care stuff on that piece. Mm -hmm. But, you know kind of taking these people that you've known over the years and putting strategic alliances yeah. together that are divorce focused or financial planning focused mm -hmm. or sports and entertainment focused. I find that's a great way to leverage people that you know and trust yeah. and that, you know, you can be presented as a team. Isn't it fun to be able to help somebody else and to give them something that they maybe couldn't get on their own? I mean, isn't that part of this? Absolutely. What's nice too. And, and Faye, has put a lot of these teams together because she's known these people for quite some time, but she's done an excellent job of putting people together that will get along. Yes. That are very knowledgeable that when, like, when we have our, our lunches, we're still launching a sports and entertainment group. We're still putting all that together. We get together for lunch. It's just a fantastic time. We are throwing around great ideas back and forth with each other, but we really enjoy working together and everybody has the expertise that we know the, the, we all need. Uh, you know, with, with our teammates being there. So she's done a fantastic job making sure that, uh, we, it, it's not a group to get together and you go, okay, we're going to be able to help people. But man, I just really don't want to sit down and talk to these people at part of the group. We really have a really good time together. And I, I, we're looking forward to, to having this thing work for many, many years and enjoy working together. Well, I think that that's part of, uh, building, uh, this whole market mate concept is, you know, there's there's a statement that uh, we've had in our family for years, and and it's goes something like this. You know, I'm I'm riding with that person, and mm -hmm. or I ain't riding with that person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that you you line up with the people you want to ride with that will return your phone calls in a timely fashion, or respond to texts, or be grateful when you put them into something that they couldn't have gotten into on their own, uh, or that will handle your referrals right, or that will. Do the right thing by people mm -hmm. and, and actually follow through in, in, in a way that's consistent with your brand. Absolutely. Well, I'll take you the, the lesson that I'm taking from this today, I think for me personally, is I need to invest more consistently. I think that was a good reminder from the person on your team, just to consistently <clears throat> cultivate those relationships out in the marketplace, 
get to know, like, trust them or not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the yeah. ones who make the cut, just stay cognizant of that. And then I think the other discipline that I need to engage in is when I am out in the marketplace, don't just look for studio partners in other markets. Don't just look for clients out of this studio that we might be able to help, but also be looking for people who provide these other services. And then the third thing, I guess, as a part of that is not just services that are sort of related to what we do. Like the graphic designer thing, that's kind of related to what we do, right? If you're going to have a nice video I, I show, actually have somebody for All right, that. fantastic. She's a past guest on the show. Well, see, that's the other, I should ask more, too. <laughs> I, should, I should just ask for help more when, when I need it. So, Well, that's good. So when Kevin buys the, the steak and lobster, we'll, 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 we'll go through that. <laughs> you, you like how he worked that in there, right? <laughs> you know what, though? I'm okay with that because we're going to have a talk after the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but what I was going to say is not only those things that are related to the craft, you know, our craft, yeah. but also, like you said, a home builder. Well, I should get to know maybe your home builder, right? But somebody's going to come to me at some point, right? And they're going to yes. say, "Look," you, and I want to be—I don't want to be scrambling. I want to. Yeah. I, I think that there is a um, uh, there is a great thing to be able to help somebody with something that they were not able to get on their own. And I wanted to finish that thought. And there was one group, one organization I was trying to get into for fifteen years, and Faye made a phone call and made it happen. And and I've been I've been. I mean, uh, uh, so, I mean, that, that, and you know, what's funny is I didn't really even ask her for it. I think I may have mentioned it in passing that I was trying to get into this group. And, and I was like, then there was just an email saying, Hey, call this person. You can talk, you can get into this group. And I was like, wow, cool. And, um, I think that part of developing the people that you ride with is people that will genuinely look out for you. Now, everybody to a person is going to say, Oh yeah, Stone, I'm going to send you business. But let's be honest. Does that really happen? I think we all know the answer to that. Right. And and you mm-hmm. can't line up with people that always have their hand out. You know, I, I'm not a scorekeeper, but at some point you got to say, all right, how are we doing here in this relationship? I mean, I would expect you guys to say that with me. And I, I always want to be on the side of, wow, we've, you know, Corey's been really helpful. He, he helps us with our business. He helps us with re- client referrals. He helps us with wholesale referrals. And I think one word really shines true with this whole thing. And that's resource because mm-hmm. everybody at some point, I've got an electrician that, I mean, he has money. He, he, he does a great job. He shows up on time. You know, he's, he's done three or four jobs in our, in our home. He's honest. He's got a huge business, but he just gets stuff done. Think about how many people you call to do work and they don't show up. They don't show up. And then they're indignant when you call them and say, Hey, are you, are you going to show? Well, no, I'm running late. It's like, you know, what about my time? And so just finding people that will follow through can sometimes be a significant act. And I think that, I mean, if there was somebody that I needed that I didn't know, I'd probably call these guys and ask them, hey, do you know, you know, here's what I'm trying to do here. Do you, do you guys know anybody? And, and that, that becomes very, very, it can relieve a lot of stress if somebody has had a, a very good experience with somebody. Can you, and, and I will say to somebody, hey, I tried this guy. Here's kind of what happened. I don't know if this is of interest to you, but here is my experience with this person. And then that person can make a decision. And if I feel strongly about someone, I can say, my clients know and my friends know that when I say I trust someone, they go, oh, okay, I'll I'll call this guy. Well, it's it's just the the value of those relationships. It's priceless. It really is. Mm -hmm. Well, and having and being able to say, hey, Stone, I'm trying to do this, you know, what do you have anybody or do you have any experience? And, and chances are, if you find the right people, they're going to say, well, yeah, I tried that 10 years ago, Corey. It didn't really work the way I wanted it to, but here's the, adju- here's what I would have done differently. Right. A lot of people, you know, have difficulty admitting, geez, I, I failed or I should have done this differently. And that's kind of, that's kind of disarming when somebody can say, I tried that. It didn't work. Um, you know, and, and here's what I would have done differently. Um, so I, I mentioned to a friend of mine the other day, another really good referral source. He said, yeah, I'm looking for a full-time person, blah, blah, blah. And, um, you know, I, 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 he said, I just really am not sure exactly how to go about hiring the right person. And I said, well, I have a lot of experience on hiring the wrong ones. Do you want some help with that? (laughs) And, you know, right now I found the right person, right? but I listened to somebody else 
lead me down a path, build a job description to do the testing, to do the interviewing. And I followed a process in order to get that. Just kind of like one developing our market mates here that we have on the show. I mean, these guys, they're friends of mine. Uh, you know, they're, they're excellent at what they do. They, they treat people the right way and they're reliable. Well, it has been an absolute delight having all three of you on the show. As we wrap, I'd like to go around the, the table if we could have you share your coordinates, let folks know how they can reach out, get in touch with you, have a more substantive conversation. Uh, but again, this has been fantastic. We'll start with you, uh, with you, Faye. Sure. Uh, well, Faye Sykes, uh, my two companies are Scarlet Oak Financial Services. And then for my specialty social security, it's social security benefit planners. Um, my phone number is 404-354-1039. And my email is F Sykes, F S Y K E S at Scarlet Oak com. My name is Corey Rick and my, uh, website is <clears throat> www.thelongtermcareplanninggroup.com. Phone number is 678-814-5088. And email address is Corey, C-O-R-E-Y, at, and this is all one word, thelongtermcareplanninggroup.com. And Kevin Salvador, also with Scarlet Oak Financial Services. You can find me exactly like you did, Faye, with, uh, on, on scarletoakfs.com. Uh, my email address is kevin at scarletoakfs.com. Fantastic. Corey, nice job putting this thing together, man. This was every bit as much fun as I thought it would be. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate the opportunity to do this with you. Thank you for having us, by the way. Yeah, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Absolutely our pleasure. All right, until next time, this is Stone Payton for Corey Rick, our guest today, and everyone here at the Business Radio X family saying we'll see you next time on Market Mate Atlanta.